going to talk about how dogs break when they come into weasels, why it matters, and how we can train for it. We're going to start this first one with Eli coming in straight on the entrance and we're going to see him power down right about here, right between uh, the beginning of pole one and before pole two. To, so he has to go into full on straight collection in order to get this entry. Run, run, run. Weep, 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 weep. Yeah, go. So now we're going to do the same thing. And I want to see how my positioning affects his entry. So on that one, I was approximately here when he entered. And so he doesn't have to pay attention to me and the weep poles. He can just grab the weep poles. So now I'm going to be in front of him. Weep, weep, weep. Yeah, weep, weep, weep. Send him in front of me and then catch up to him. Weep, weep, weep. Yeah, good boy. Weep, 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 weep. Yeah, good. So, what dogs naturally do when they're first learning how to weave is they don't know how to break. They don't know how to slow down their body and change their natural arc their natural parabola. So just like baseball, basketball, right, so just like baseball, basketball, um, dogs create a natural parabola arc that when they move, when they're turning, they turn in a natural parabola arc, just like the St. Louis arch or throwing a basketball. Once it lifts off the handler's hands or baseball, once it lifts off the, the player's hands, it takes a natural arc back down to the ground. Dogs do the exact same thing when they're first learning wee pulls and jumping for that matter. But for wee pulls, it's specifically, um, I, I, what's the right word I'm looking for? It's highlighted with wee pulls because the, the natural parabola is generally much bigger than the arc that they need to do in training. And so when we're looking at dogs not breaking appropriately for entrances, it's generally comes down to teaching them if they understand their weave pulls, it's teaching them how to mechanically change their body weight and shift leads in a very quick fashion way. So there's a few things that you can do um, to help them learn how to weight shift. One is do a ton of extension to collection work. Um, so you can do that in either recall to uh, heel. You can do that um, running them from extension onto a, a cattle board or a target platform with a platform on it. And what you're looking for is when they're coming down the platform, how straight are they? How in control of their rear end are they? Because when they're coming down, if they're not in control of their rear end, what they do is their hind end continues to exert the same amount of energy and it falls forward. So you've all seen the dogs do handstands. Um, I'm sure you've seen dogs fall off the teeter, uh, fall off a stop contact for an A-frame. So that is about control of their hind end and learning how to weight shift back so that they come in straight with their butt underneath them rather than on their forearms and their, their body dropping forward and their butt going over. So the same thing happens in the weave pulse, especially when they're coming um, from these from either the straight on or from the on side so there's nothing to naturally stop them from breaking when they're coming from the off side when they're coming this way and coming around this pull helps to throw on the brakes this pull this first pull helps them into collection and we'll talk about this wrap all by itself because that's a whole different ball game but learning how to break when they're coming straight on to the weave poles, they have to put on the, the 
the brake cues for their own bodies somewhere between the first before the first pull and before the second pull. So somewhere between here and here, the dogs need to start putting on the brakes or potentially even sooner, depending on the, the style of dog. But if they pass the halfway mark of the first pull, between pull one and two, if they pass that halfway mark, then they're gonna fight, they have to fight to get their nose wrapping around uh, pole two. And so we wanna see them learn how to decelerate right through here. And so when we're doing that, we want to have them learn that this pole is actually the pole of more importance. So learning how to wrap this second pole. So let me show you how I do that. So this is how I start on side uh, weave pull braking, how I start to teach my dogs um, on-site weave pull braking. And at this point, my dogs have shown me that they know about the poles, they know how to drive through the poles and they can go and find them. So I'll show you one thing that I do do to make sure that they do that is I set the poles up like this and then what I do is I move either this set or this set sideways. And so I'll take it and I'll put it offset. I'll move it offset. And what I want to see is does my dog come through, change their natural parabola arc, and go out and find the next set. And so I'll move this set in both directions, making sure that my dog from both sides can go and find that entrance, change their natural parabola, which would take them out here, but that they're willing to change that natural parabola and come back in and find this second set. So once I know that the dogs will do that or they have a pretty good idea about that, what I do is I go up to this configuration. So this configuration is only working on the soft side. That is it. It's not. We're not going to do this um, from the off side yet. Um, and what I'm asking them to do is to find the first gate and then follow through onto the second gate and I want to see that they are changing their natural parabola to start to put on the brakes to wrap this second pull so this is what I'm figuring out is well two things I'm figuring out one are they looking at the first set of pulls two how tight are they wrapping pull number two so this is when I'm working the onside I'm looking for the braking system for pull number two and so what dogs will naturally do when they come from any angle really, they will come up, they'll grab it, and if they're not trained, they'll run right by it, okay? So they'll run right by in that natural parabola arc. So I want to see them grab this first pole, pivot, put on the brakes, and move through the second set. So what I do is I move this second set. So this is pole number three right here. And I want you to think about this yellow one as being like a guide wire. So it's a guide, go through. And what I do is I start to move it along and, and still focusing on this pole two and seeing are they grabbing the ground right here, turning and going. And the more that they understand this, the stronger you'll hear them pull the dirt up or the ground up right off of pole number two. And so this pole starts to move and come in line. And now we have poles one, two, and three in line. So we've got one, two, three of our weed pole configuration. Now it's far further away, so it's about, right now I have it about four and a half feet um, to allow them to learn how to do the mechanics of that that's pulling down deceleration braking system that they're going to need. Go Eve. Yeah, good. So what I'm looking at is how hard do they turn on that second pull? Out. Behind. Weave, 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 weave. Yeah. And so in the very beginning stages, I'll have it pretty far so that they can help correct themselves. And um, as they get stronger, I'll do one of two things. I'll either over arc them to really see them grab down and help them learn how to change that lead and grab this second set. So we'll try that again. Ready? Go in. Go in. Yeah. Go in. Once I have my three poles lined up, then I'll alternate 
between doing the offside entry, working this pole and just this pole wrap going around 270. Um, and then I'll bounce back and forth between the, on, the onside and the offside. So once I'm on the offside, then I'm going to start to do either one of two things and I'll alternate it and I'll, I'll kind of bounce around between all the different stages that I do. Um, first off, this will start to become pole four. And so, so once I have my dogs going through, through their weave poles and seeking out the second set, then I'll start to ask them to do it for a little bit longer duration. So I'll bring in the third set. I'll bring in my third set of two by twos and I'll ask them once again to go all three. So again, we're only working the onside to go all three sets. And again, I'll start to ask them to keep following for the pull. So this one will start to move over, asking them to come through and create a river. And as they continue to show me that they're doing it, I will continue to create that turn off of pole two into pole three. And now I'm also asking for the turn from pole three to pole four. So again, this one is just a guide wire. This one is a guide wire. And we've got pole one, two, three, and four starting to line up starting to show the dogs how they're going to flow through these weep holes. Once my dogs are showing me that they're willing to go through from the first set to the second set to the third set that I just removed, I will start to turn them. And I'll start to turn them, giving them a little bit less space to come through. So going from 24 inches down to about 18 or so. Kind of varies on the dog. And from there, I will start to move it again and moving it and asking them to continue that path with a smaller entrance. And I'll either do one of two things. I'll either continue to turn the poles or I'll keep the pole open and I'll go tighter. So now I'm asking them to wrap this even tighter, this second pole even tighter coming through and grabbing this gap. And if at any point they struggle, so a struggle for me is more than two misses. So if they if they miss it on the second try, sometimes I'll give them a third one, but if they miss it on the second try, then I make it easier again. Just open it up a little bit, remind them, or I'll give them a break. And so once they start to have it lined up and turn, now I'm working this nice bend that they're going to need to get the braking system that we want for pull three. Once they learn how to break right through here, all of a sudden they start to understand how to weave. So again, what they'll do naturally is they will take a parabola and skip. So we need them to learn how to put on the brakes right here, hit it, and drop back onto the second pull. And if they struggle, we give them more time and more distance to do that until they're showing it to us naturally. If they're bypassing this side of the pole, then they're going to continue to do that even if you go to this. They'll come through and they'll grab the fourth pole because they haven't learned how to put on the brakes right up there on pole number two. So it doesn't matter if they understand how to weave. If they don't know how to break, they're going to continue to pass over pole number three. So once they understand that braking system, we make it harder for them so they have to do it faster. Um, and then we make it even tighter so now they really have to grab that entrance. And so we can keep this gate open and treat this like a wire guide until they understand this section right here. If they don't understand this section, your weeds are going to struggle for your entrances for a while until they pick that up. 